Hi, everybody. This is Lisa Haven, and I came across some pretty shocking government army documentation, and um, quite frankly, it's pretty flooring. If people that you know don't believe in the New World Order or doubt it, this is 100% for them to watch. Even for those of you who do, I doubt um, some of you have seen some of these documents, and some of you may have, but... Um, you're going, it's going to floor you about what's in it. But here's, here's the headline. This is huge. 100% proof of the new world order. Government documents prove their agenda, goal, a world police force, and what they intend to do. Plus an eerie tie to September 11th. Indisputable evidence. And uh, let's just dive right in. All right. So here is the first document I want to show you. And it's done by Lieutenant Colonel Larry L. Miller of the United States Army. The headline, The New World Order, A Vision and Its Dimensions. Now, they make a quick disclaimer up here. You can barely read it here. But it basically says that these do not reflect the views of the Department of Defense or any other government agencies, so to speak. And, of course, they, are, they say it's the, it's the views of the author. I get it, okay? Of course they have to put that on there. But here's the thing. I'm going to prove to you also that this is exactly what you're going to see going on in the study. And second of all, um, a lot of what's in this study has already come to pass, has already been formed. And these are things that we need to keep in mind. And although this, this is their disclaimer, um, there's no reason to make a report like this and spend the money on a project about a new world order if your intent is not to use it. Why waste the money? Why waste the time? And why make um, lieutenant colonels? write such a thing unless there's an intent on using it. Now, this isn't the only document I found, and let me show you um, here on um, government documents about the New World Order. These are the ones I found on blackvault.com, but here's one, two, three, four, okay? All about the New World Order, five, six. These are studies done, seven, eight, nine. Uh, why so many studies? 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, okay? 36 studies done all about the New World Order. Okay, so back here. So why waste time on doing all these studies if your intent is not to use it? Good question. This is exactly the intent. Now, this was put out by the U.S. Army War College in Carlisi. Um, and you can, you can kind of see the address here. But let me take you to their website. Here it is. These are the men that put it together. And as you can see, it's a, it's a Department of the Army. Okay, obviously they work for the government. That is what, you know, the army is a part of. We have the military branch of the government. But as you can see, it is Carlisi, the same address on the document here. Okay, same place, same organization. Now, let me just show you the kind of men involved under About Us. Let's check a glance at the leadership. Here's the leadership. Uh, we have major generals. We have commander sergeant majors. These are all high time military army personnel. Um, these aren't your average everyday people. These are major influential men who belong to this uh, U.S. Army War College and are allowing the production of such studies. So keep that in mind. One thing I want to show you is when you click on faculty directory, it does this. Your connection is not private. Uh, attackers might be trying to steal your information from, funny, from there. Uh, in other words, they are trying to access my stuff. I'm curious if any of you guys do this, if you have the same issue. Uh, but I wanted to show you that. Um, makes me very suspicious. But I'll leave a link so you can check that out. Uh, basically, what, what they do is they, they uh, before, I, before I leave, is they put out um, studies and graduates. They, they, they have graduates and it's to provide high quality professional military education and studies and yada, yada.
Uh, but let's go to the document because that's what I want to focus on. All right, so here we are. My intent is to get through two documents uh, out of the 30. Um, but the two that I want to focus on is this one. The other one I want you to hang tight for is policing the new world order. A study done about that and um, evidence that that is also the case. Okay, so first of all, as you can see, there's the same address. It's been unclassified. And here's what I want to show you real quick. The United States is no longer the world's economic power. Um, at least they are preemptive, preeminent economic power. At least they admit it. Um, it also says, and this is kind of your overview, from the perspective of combined military, economic, political, and diplomatic power, the U.S. has no equal. But it goes on to say President Bush, now this was done during, during that time, so it's very important to note that though some of this is about Bush, it can be applied to any president in office in the future, obviously, that has similar power. President Bush suggests that a new world order has emerged. Principles of democracy, shared responsibility, and mutual cooperation among nations are the hallmarks of that new world order. He recommends that the principles of the new world order guide the foreign policy of the U.S. through the decade of 19th and into the 21st century, okay, not only into the 90s, but also into the 21st century. This paper probes the dimensions of that new world order. It discusses the likelihood of a, of a unipolar or multipolar world and concludes that a stratified world order might be a more apt dis description. It explores the role of international organizations within the New World Order. It examines implications for U.S. foreign policy. The Department of Defense, okay, there they are on it, although it's not a shared view, and the U.S. Army. The paper concludes by revealing his vision and how compelling it is for a new world order. Um, so there, basically it's why a new world order is imperative and um, why they want to pursue it. Okay, so I'm just going to skip right here. Um, in this little part, I want to show you one sentence. Uh, President Bush suggests that a new world order has emerged. Uh, the paper concludes by revealing why his vision is compelling. Again, that overall thing. And here's just a couple. Um, you can pause this on any of it, but I highly recommend you go into the document itself. But here's a quick introduction. Uh, what I want to show you quickly here okay, is this. And this is on scroll page seven. And it says, President Bush suggests that a new world order has emerged. Principles of democracy, shared responsibility, and mutual cooperation are the hallmarks of that new world order. He recommends that the principles of the new world order guide the U.S. foreign policy throughout the decade of the 90s into the 21st century. Same thing that we had read earlier. And then it goes on to say, but what exactly is the new world order? And he says, in this paper, they will analyze exactly that, what that question, what is the new world order and how does it apply to foreign and national policy? In part one, they discuss Bush's vision, which I'm going to get into. And part two, they'll analyze the Cold War and it will question whether or not the United States is the only remaining superpower. And um, it will also explore the possibilities and project the role of international organizations within the new order. Notice this whole thing is focusing on the new world order, like it is already in effect, so to speak. And then we have part three, which will examine implications for U.S. foreign policy, the DOD, the U.S. Army. And it will conclude again by finding his vision compelling. Here is part one. Now, I find this rather disheartening. Um, I want you to notice right here on September 11th, 1990. Why is that day important? All of you know the answer. Because on September 11th, 2001, we had the World Trade Center um, crash down. We had the terrorist activity on the, on the World Trade Centers. And here we are, President Bush outlining to Congress a vision of the future, calling it a new world order. And when did he do this? On September 11th of 1990. 
funny. Funny. It's not funny. It's sick and sad, actually. But it's 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 upsetting that it's kind of like they, they love to give you a peek into something that they're going to do in the future. And we all know September 11th was put on by our government. And um, anyhow, we know that there was a, a means to an end, a goal for it. And uh, lots of people died, unfortunately. But this continued, the, the 9-11 also helped push the agenda for the new world order. And he even discussed it on September 11th in 1990. Um, so just that eerie tie I wanted to mention to about September 11th, 2001. Now it says on September 11th, 1990, President Bush outlined to Congress a vision for the future, calling it a new world order. He described it as an error freer from the threat of terror. Crazy. Okay. Crazy how terrorists attacked on 9-11. Now he's talking about it's free from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice and more secure in the quest for peace and an era in which the nations of the world can prosper and live in harmony. Isn't that great? He went on to say that there, that this is a world where the rule of law surplants the rule of the jungle, a world in which nations recognize the shared responsibility for freedom and justice, a world where the strong respect the rights of the weak. Addressing the UN in October 1990, he called for a new partnership of nations in order to promote mutual security and well-being. And it goes on to say, he said that the world needed serious international cooperative efforts to make headway on threats on the environment, on terrorism, on managing the debt burden, on fighting the scourge of international drug trafficking, on refugees and peacekeeping around the world. Interesting. Um, it goes on to say that these two speeches summarize his vision and provide the basis of his national strategy. Now, again, I, I want to mention this. Although it's talking about President Bush's vision, it's not only President Bush. We've heard many presidents talking about a new world order. The strategy is the same no matter what president you are. You it, This is part of the vision. And you can tell from the 30 documents I just showed you, 30 studies put out uh, by different organizations, but a lot of them put out by the organization I showed you, the Army um, War College, very clearly states it's an objective. But here's some of, I guess, the objectives for a national strategy. And he says, a stable and secure world where political and economic freedom, human rights, and democratic institutions flourish. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm sure that's exactly what Hitler had in mind when he wanted to kind of take over the world. Um, his ways to attend these goals or the end means is to maintain a stable regional military balance to deter those powers that might seek regional dominance like our government, to promote diplomatic solutions, um, to promote the growth of free democratic political institutions, to aid in combating threats to democratic institutions, to support aid, trade, and investment policies that promote economic development. Then they make he makes a bold claim. Clearly, the president seeks to es the establishment of a stable and democratic world, uh, not just country, but a world. His primary means for attaining that goal are international organizations, and he lists them. Okay, these are the goal, the, the organizations that they want to use to accomplish their new world order. Number one, the UN. Has the UN been put into place? Obviously so. Is their, is their goal world peacekeeping? Yes, it is. Then he goes on the World Bank and the World Health Organization. And now can we add to that the World Council of Churches, kind of like your uh, uh, religion for all. Um, going down here, it says issues such as arms control. They are pushing that one, especially through the UN, who has a website devoted to disarmament. Let me show you. Here we are, disarmament and related treaties. This is part of the UN ploy to disarm everyone worldwide, not just here in America, folks, but that is probably their number one target at this moment. Disarm the people so they can't fight back. 
back to the document. Other issues include nuclear proliferation, illegal drugs, displaced persons. Okay, let's pause right there. Why is this an issue for the New World Order or the UN or the organizations that are doing that? Well, let me bring back to mind the internment resettlement document. Let's go there real quick. All right, this document is about FEMA camps. That is the nickname. They are calling them internment camps, labor camps. They go, it goes by various other names. But in this document, it talks very clearly about dislocated civilians and how dislocated civilians can be part, uh, can be rounded up and put into these camps surrounded by barbed wire and guard towers like they're prisoners, okay? You can look this up on this document later. Don't want to focus on that, but you can go to that page and look it up. Back to the other. Um, more issues, global economic imbalances, because we know that's coming, and pollution, obviously. They got to throw in, throw in a little bit of pretty with the bad. Um, so keep in mind, when they're talking about things like this, there's other agendas. You have your gun control and your displaced persons, which I referenced two different things for that. Um, moving on, one last thing I want to show you on this page is it says here, George Bush disagrees vehemently with the American first philosophy of critics such as Patrick J. Buchanan, if that philosophy means retreating from our worldwide leadership role. Okay, in other words, basically he disagrees with him and he thinks we don't need to have a new world order. I mean, Buchanan doesn't think that we do, but Bush does. Uh, just something to add there. Moving on to scroll page 11, there page 6. And it says, we belong to the United Nations and other international organizations which represent important interests to the United States, such as world health problems, the ecology, the environment, refugees, food shortages, and their, it's admitted, population control. Interesting. I'm kind of curious as to, it, I mean, they're, they're saying that they belong to international organizations that represent those interests. What and who represent the population control interest and what are they doing about it? You know, are they, you know, I don't know. Are they releasing, what are they going to do? I don't know. That's the thing. And that's kind of a frightening thing, but I wanted to point that out as well. Okay, so moving on to their page seven, scroll page 12. And what I mean by scroll page is, you know, when you're scrolling, but uh, this is their page seven. And it says, likewise, from a military perspective, the U.S. can no longer afford to be the policeman of the world. At least they admit that that's what they're doing. Uh, without a doubt, however, active, well-trained, and well-equipped armed forces are still necessary. All right. Let me show you real quick two documents that prove also that this is their intent. Okay. Number one, policing the new world order and alternative strategy. I'm actually going to go through this in, the mo in a moment right after this one. This is my second document, but that's one. Here's two. And I'm going to leave a link to this one because I'm not going through it today anyway. Arms control and proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. How will they impact U.S.? In the new world order, notice the words arms control. This is part, and, and it's also put out by the Army War College. Funny how all of this is kind of linked to that, uh, but there's two of those. Um, also here, we have the UN Nations Peacekeeping Force here. You can see the blue um, peacekeeping operations, things that they have. They are already forming their military and their army, and if you just Google um, UN peacekeepers or UN army, you will find tons of uh, photos and information. And it includes people from every country, basically not everyone, but most countries across the U we have the US, we have Canadians, we have Russians, we have Chinese, we have uh, all different kinds of peacekeepers. Here's Mongolians, all working for, you guessed it, the UN. Back to the doc. All right, so there's your global police force, so to speak. Um, I want to go to scroll page 14, page number, their page number nine, and it says, thus, President Bush indicates how the world should police itself, and all peace-loving nations should join together to promote their own well-being and to deny 
or redress unlawful international acts. The president led the world in building a successful military coalition in the Gulf. Now he proposes similar arrangements for the future. Um, there's that. Next page 10, page, there page 10, scroll page 15. And he says here, according to the president, the new world order is not a fact. It is an aspiration and an opportunity. So whether or not you want to consider it a fact, it is something they are aspiring to. Therefore, because this is their agenda, this is their goal, this is what they want to do. It is something that is a fact because they have created organizations around that World Council of Churches. We have the World Bank. We have the United Nations with a peacekeeping, quote, quote supposedly peacekeeping army. Uh, if these documents, these documents, look, were, they were created for a reason. And that reason is to create a new world order. And this is what they're doing. It's exactly what we see. So, yes, this is exactly what we are seeing. Moving on to their page 14, right here, scroll page 19. Um, and it says, because our world is both multipolar and unipolar, depending upon the element of power from which one is looking at a particular situation, perhaps Michael Roskins and Nicholas Berry have hit upon a better way of describing our present world. They propose a stratified model. And here is their quote. A stratified world would have at least three levels. OK, so this is what they propose. And obviously, if we're talking about a new world order, three levels, a superpower at the top. Well, who's going to be the superpower? Good question. Uh, Antichrist, maybe uh, major players, one level down. That would be your uh, Brzezinski's and Bill Gates and people with lots and lots of money. That would be my presumption. And a series of weaker countries after that, ranging from robust NICS, newly industrialized countries, to pathetic basket cases. Wow, isn't that great? The second tier would be further divided into two. The money bag powers of German, Germany and Japan, and countries such as Britain and France, who have moderate ability to protect power overseas. Okay? So pretty interesting there. Moving on to the next page, 15, uh, scroll page 20. This is another quote by Roskin and Barry. And right here is what I want to point out. It says, understanding the world system then means you can go with the flow of events and sometimes manipulate them. Huh. Well, there's their admittance to manipulating events around the world, such as 9-11 and other uh, events that have happened uh, purposefully. Moving on, and I'm just gonna kind of scroll through this. I've read this entire document. You can, it's actually only uh, 30, no, 40, look, 41 pages total. So it's not, it's not, that, not that bad of a read, um, but I did read the whole thing. So I'm hitting the highlights. Uh, here is scroll page 23. Uh, page number 18, here they talk about international rules, which means that's something that they want to put in place. It says international rules help reinforce cont continuity and a long-term focus to what typically prevails in democratic politics. They also set limits on constituency pressures in Congress. So uh, limiting our Congress. Funny how presidents for a while have been issuing executive orders sideswiping Congress. It goes on to say that President Bush or any other president, for that matter, recognizes the importance of organizations such as the UN and the World Bank and all of those as actively attempting to use them as forums to achieve his ends. What's his ends? Democracy, shared responsibility, and mutual uh, com co excuse me, cooperation among nations. Uh, but I have to say, maybe that was his agenda, 
But people like Obama, Stalin, Hitler, Hitler, and all of them, their agenda is quite different. And that would be tyranny. And what's to stop somebody from having a tyranny mindset over a new world order? There isn't. There isn't things in place. He goes on to say, obviously, the United Nations is the most important. Why is it the most important? Because that's where your world leader is going to arise. That is where your world army arises. But it says that the, the U.S. government is basically involved in in it very much so and seeking the influence of others to do likewise. Moving on to page 21, scroll page 26. It says right here that President Bush is not limited only to the UN for implementation of his vision. He can use many other international organizations as ways of, of um, pursuing his ends. Among them, he includes the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, Overseas Development Council, all of which may support economic development and alleviate debt burden. Stuff right there. Um, blah, that's kind of frightening. How can he use our money and our debt, all of this kind of economic uh, stuff to accomplish his ends? How? Hmm? Maybe if we go into some kind of economic crisis. He can push his New World Order agenda. Do you get how he can use that? I know you do. People out there don't. And those are the ones we need to wake up. I can see that. I can see that wholly. How that, and, and they're basically admitting it on here. All right, moving on to page 23. The president's goal, however, is quite simple, a stable and democratic world marked by international cooperation and shared responsibility because the major problems of the new world cut across national boundaries and the solutions to global problems exceed the resources of any single nation. The international organizations mentioned in part two could provide ways and means to solve their problem. Um, page 25, actually this is Throughout page 24 and 25, I'm going to summarize it, but it talks about what about national sovereignty, because they know that our sovereignty and our freedom comes into play with the formation of a new world order. And you're dang right it does. So they, what do they go to do? They say that our sovereignty is outdated. That is the solution. As a result of everything up here, they said our sovereignty is outdated, and this is how they can go around it and start pushing their agenda. Another reason why Obama is claiming that our Constitution is outdated. Where did he get the idea from? Here, from minds that put documents like this together, and this is exactly what they're claiming. And people, this is going to upset people left and right, and the truth is, they know it. So they go on to ask this question, will the new world order play in Peoria? Will the American people allow, and that's the question I have, will we allow our government to pursue a foreign policy so intertwined in the UN and other international organizations? And they say that that presents a problem. Okay, so here's, here's my suggestion. Obviously, they present that as an issue. Um, that being said, their answer is basically your internment and resettlement. Those dissidents, those dislocated civilians or people who are against the New World Order will be rounded up. Now, they do not say that in this document. All they say in this, that is my opinion, all they say in this document is that it could be problematic in the future, kind of an overall statement. But if we take into consideration other documents, we can assume that that is what the ultimate agenda is, which they actually expand a little bit in this document about that here. Um, as we know, Brzezinski points out that dream. What dream is he talking about? They're saying that the new world order is part of the American dream and, and not my dream, it sure ain't. But it says that Brzezinski points out that the dream of a new world order will soon fade away if the U.S. does not first get its domestic house in order. And what is what does he mean by the domestic problems? Uh, obviously, they do mean domestic terrorists, such as, according to other documents, such as the right wing extremist document, Google it, by Janet Napolitano, put out that describes 
Christians, Catholics, anti-abortion, anti-gay people, veterans, patriots, as, you guessed it, terrorists. And uh, so there you have it. Last thing I want to show you is on page 29, uh, scroll page 34, and it's this. They ask the question, for the New World Order to fully develop as Bush envisions it, or any other president, all the major nations of the earth will have to in some way join together for the benefit of all. Will it happen? Well, according to the Bible, if you are a Christian, um, it tells us in there that the Antichrist will rule over every tribe, tongue, and nation. In my opinion, that is your new world order. All right, so moving on to the other documents here, policing the new world order. Now that they've established that that's something they are attempting to do, uh, there's the link. I'll also leave a link. We also have this. And again, they have to put their little disclaimer on this because obviously... That's not their agenda. Yet, like I just showed you guys, we see a police form forming at the UN. Obviously, it is their agenda. Then they pass, pass things in the House, such as the Disarmament Treaty uh, or the um, Arms Trade Treaty, excuse me, which is basically the same thing uh, to, in a roundabout way, that is their goal. Uh, so, yes, although they put their disclaimer on there, this is exactly what we see happening. Um, and here you can see who performing organizations, we have the National Defense University National War College of Fort McNair in Washington, D.C. So that is who put this one on. Now, I read through this entire document, and I'm really going to skim it, not focus so much like I did on the other one, because I don't want to keep you guys long. But this is scroll page five. And um, here it asks the questions here. By whom or how will the next, next world crisis be policed? That implies that they obviously want to police it by someone. And so here is one idea, so to speak. One, and the most suggested idea on all the documents that I've read. One response to these questions is the establishment of a standing UN peacekeeping force to assist in maintaining the new world order and enforcing and enforcing UN resolutions as required. United Nations Peacekeeping Force. Oh, that sounds familiar. Ah, yes, here we are, UN.org, United Nations Peacekeeping. Oh, look, force. You guys are going to be shocked at some of the stuff that I have, and I and I don't mean to keep you so long, but, but this is very, very imperative. I um, showed you this a minute ago, but they're there. However, back to the document, they have their little disclaimer, kind of a catch, a little ironic. I don't know, but it's definitely ironic to me. All right, here is one last thing I want to show you on this page. Um, it says the new world order and the UN's inability to enforce world order. Basically, what that's saying is um, they want them to enforce it more, and they're not doing it enough, so to speak. That's what that is. Moving on to page, or scroll page six, it says that in the fourth part of this proposal for the standing UN peacekeeping force, which the U.S. would support in the 1990s, and it will also conclude with the view of America's future in policing the new world order. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Scroll page three, or seven, page three, uh, down at the bottom, it has this beautiful statement. America's strategy in response to the Persian Gulf crisis is a critical benchmark as we approach, approach the 21st century and a new world order. So it was a benchmark in order to get to the new world order. Moving on. This is their page six, scroll page 10, reshaping the force for a new world order, police guidance to a defense strategy. Um, here, it states this, which I found kind of shocking. This is probably ultimately one of their goals, but it says the new command structure would likely call for an Atlantic force, a Pacific force, a contingency force, and a strategic nuclear force. Could this be something that we see forming in the future? Likely. 
especially since they have done other things already that this document suggested or the study suggested. Uh, okay, uh, repackaging old policy for a new world order right here on the very next page, specifically the criticism of the emerging national defense strategy is that it lacks any provisions, security arrangements or objective which push the UN forward as the world policemen. OK, obviously what they are saying there is they want the United Nations to police the world. That's the agenda. That's the objective. Uh, not necessarily us here in the U.S., but they want the U.N. to do it. And like I showed you on their website, that is exactly what they are doing. Moving on to page nine, scroll page 13. It says a proposal, the UN peacemaking force, and they're calling it UNPF. Now there is a UNPF right now and it's United Nations Population Fund, but there's also the United Nations Peacekeeping Army, so to speak. Um, but it states here, so as we enter a new world order, a short notice military employment capability is the most important option we want available to the UN and the community of nations during the warning period of any impending crisis. It goes on down here to state, this force would provide the UN a credible standing military army to enforce the world, not just part of the world, but the entire world. Um, moving on to page 11, and then it breaks on um, to break down, or not breaks up, but breaks up their description of exactly what the United Nations peacekeeping force is and what they'll be allowed. Now, this is some shocking information. This is on their page 11, 12, 13, and 14, scroll page 15, 16, 17, and 18. So here is what I found, and this is pretty pretty interesting stuff, but here's their ground component. Um, basically, this is your brigades and your groundwork, like the, the, the army, so to speak, of the United Nations. Then we also have not only an army of the UN, but we have an air force of the UN, uh, you know, fighting by air. Then we also have, you guessed it, a naval compound of the UN with their own UN flag. Isn't that wonderful? This is just great. This is just great. Um, then we have their general support component. And I guess this would be more of your humanitarian type thing that offers transportation, services, supply, and maintenance. Transportation for, who knows, military supplies or whatever they deem it for. Um, then I find, and excuse my passion on this, it's just, you know, when you read things and you know what they are, it's, what do you do? Um, but here it says, undoubtedly, there are those who will outright reject this proposal, amen, because it diametrically opposes the traditional U.S. philosophy, which avoids placing U.S. forces under others, and the desire for an independent national defense strategy, at least... They admit it. Amen. I am one of those who reject it 100%. Why? Because that's exactly what it does. And it, 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 it puts us under some other command. And we're an independent nation. We're not run by some other force. Moving on to their page 24. Excuse the scrolling. Um, here we are. It says, in view of the radical changes in the world over the past few years, establishment of a standing U.S. force is permissible and that the U.S. should lead the efforts. And that, I have to say, we are. One last thing I'm going to share with you, and I'm skipping over a lot here, folks, but it says, as, en as America enters a different security environment, talk about NSA, it must demonstrate by action that it truly recognizes a new world order. Support of a standing UN peacemaking force is such an action. So by America standing up for the United Nations peacekeeping force proves our allegiance, so to speak, to the new world order. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I'm just gonna leave this information for you guys to do with it what you will. 
but I wanted to bring it to you. And like I said, there's 30 of these. There was a lot similar. A lot of them had similar patterns throughout it. So when I read some of the other ones, a lot of it was, you know, the same as some of the other studies, basically a little different, but mainly the same. So then you, you kind of get the overall gist of it. But anyhow, wanted to bring you guys the latest. This is Lisa Haven signing off.